Hi everybody, I'm Kathy from Kathy's Containers, and today we're going to talk about a plant haul. And who doesn't love a plant haul when you're stuck inside, can't go to your favorite nursery and do a little plant shopping? So next best thing is have the plants delivered right to you. And that's what I had done. So I found a nursery on Instagram called Gabriella's Plants. They did a really nice job with these. That's why I wanted to pass along this information. I'm not being sponsored. They didn't pay me to say this. I just wanted to share my experience with this mail order uh, delivery and what the plants look like and how they came to me. And I can tell you overall, I was very, very happy. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is Calathea roseopicta rosy. And this is what she looks like. So this is a really pretty bright pink fuchsia leaf with kind of a plum colored edge, deep plum, deep purple. Uh, typical Calathea so that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind, it doesn't wanna sit in soggy water or soggy soil. You're gonna let it stay moist. Don't let it dry out completely. Water it with rainwater or distilled water. It doesn't like the minerals in tap water. So if you had a Calathea that was getting kind of crispy around the edges and you don't know why, it's probably because of your the water that you're giving it. Um, that could be one of the first things you could look at. So rainwater or distilled water. Uh, mine, and with all of my house plants, not the cactus and succulents, but with all my typical house plants, I use happy frog potting mix and I'll mix in some worm castings, which is worm poo. And that's a nice low dose soil amendment. It's only one zero zero on the fertilizer scale. So it's not super strong. It's It promotes strong root growth and it does a really good job with the foliage. There's also a um, solar release fertilizer that came already in the soil that mix that they plant their stuff in. So I didn't add any more uh, slow release fertilizer to the mix that I put together here, but I would um, give it a half dose liquid fertilizer mix every couple of weeks once we get maybe into May. Uh, full-blown growing season. I also top off all my um, uh, calatheas with the fine orchid bark so that it just looks nice, keeps the moisture in there, and it also doesn't uh, keeps the uh, perlite from kind of rising to the surface, which isn't necessarily all that pretty. So once again, this is uh, Calathea roseopicta rosy, and boy, she sure is a beauty. The next one I got was Calathea vitata. And this one is really unique in the way that it's got these pretty striped leaves, kind of long pointed leaf. Um, this one uh, came in a four inch pot, just like the other one did. The other one was in a four inch pot that I potted up. This one is a slightly larger than a four inch pot that I just put it in. Same, same soil mix, same uh, thing where I put the uh, orchid bark on the top just to maintain moisture so it doesn't dry out too fast. But keep in mind that calatheas will tell you when they're not happy, when they're um, when they're needing a little more water because their leaves are like a little droopy and you'll know, oh, got to get that thing watered because if you let them go too long, it goes to the point of no return and then you're SOL and you can't do anything about it. So this, once again, is calathea vitata with its pretty striped leaves. The next one I got is philodendron birkin. Now the unique thing about this is this has striped leaves when it first starts. So the new growth has a striped leaf, but then they tend to uh, kind of fade a little bit and are more of a solid leaf. So this one also came in a four inch pot. This one I just planted into a four and a half inch plastic pot that then I put into this decorative one just so that it would look a little nicer. But uh, once again, Philadelphia, F not Philadelphia, Philodendron Birkin has really pretty uh, pinstriping and then it kind of fades to a solid colored leaf as they get a little bit older. That's one thing I like about uh, having uh, foliage that's got some interest to it. So when you have plants that don't necessarily flower or flower very often or have anything of a flower that's really spectacular, at least you have pretty foliage so that you can, you know, change it from stripe, modeling, you know, kind of a camo look, but things that have some interest to them. So it's not just a bunch of blah green leaves. At least they, uh, at least they stand out a little bit. And that's what the, this one does. Next, I got a fern. So this is a crocodile fern and you can see it's 
crocodile type foliage. So that's something different. I don't really have uh, many f uh, ferns in my collection. I have one other one and it's a kangaroo foot fern that actually was growing on the floor of a friend's greenhouse and he literally pulled it out of the ground and gave it to me bare root. And I'm like, oh, this thing's never going to live. But yeah, it lived and it actually, uh, I could split it into two parts because it had gotten big enough. Uh, so what I do with my ferns, this is planted in the same happy frog mix and I've got the orchid bark on top to kind of keep it moist, but once again, not soggy. You don't want these in, in a soggy soil. But then what I'll do is I put a saucer under here and maybe raise it off the bottom a little bit so with some pea gravel or some rocks just so that it's not sitting down in the water. But then I keep that saucer filled with water to help the uh, uh, moisture so that it stays a little more humid, the leaves stay humid, they won't over the winter time get a little dry and crispy. You don't want that. And I, since I've done that, it's worked really well. And my fern, these two kangaroo foot ferns uh, are thriving. So I can only hope that it will work the same for this one. And uh, maybe even in the summertime, I can find a slightly shady spot to put this outside and I'm sure it'll do even better. Uh, my ferns are in an east facing window and so that only gets maybe you know an hour not even two hours of direct sunlight but very mild sunlight and then the rest of the day it's all indirect light so they really really appreciate that and that's what I would suggest for this one too. So this once again is a crocodile fern. And the last one is the most spectacular of all. This is Alocasia ivory coast. Wow, look at that. So this was in a six inch pot and I planted this in another six inch pot, like a, a larger, or no, no, no. Yeah, this is a six inch pot. Um, just a plastic terracotta pot, but then I put it inside here so it would look a little prettier. But boy, look at the leaves on this guy. Uh, bright, shiny, uh, typical alocasia leaves. And this was packaged really well because they had uh, two stakes to kind of hold all the leaves together you know, so that nothing would get bent, but they had it in a sleeve of plastic and then a f like a styrofoam sleeve over that. And boy, it really did really well in, in uh, transit. So there was no bent leaves. It's like I went to the nursery and picked it out myself. This is uh, beautiful. And boy, look at that leaf on there. It is spectacular. So this once again is Alocasia Ivory Coast. And uh, it's, it's a gorgeous one. So a couple things that uh, just to take note of. The way they were packaged was done really well. Each one was in an individual package. They took um, like cotton, packed it around the top of the soil, rubber banded that down so that no soil would get loose during transit. Then each one was in a sleeve of like a frost cloth type material. Then the, styrof the foam sleeve was over that. And then each one was they were laying down in the box and I have pictures of all this. I typically will repot them into my potting mix. I kind of work away a little bit of their soil, but I didn't want to totally disrupt the roots because some of these have fine roots. So I gently work away some of their soil, which was very, very much of a peat based mix. I think it's mainly for quick, fast growth. So then I mix in my happy frog mix with the uh, worm castings and uh, then I topped it, so most of these off with the orchid bark. And that's just to keep the moisture in, just so that they don't dry out too quickly. So the all of these are going to take about the same type of lighting conditions, not direct sunlight. You don't want to burn the heck out of the leaves. Bright, indirect light. They can take morning light, morning sun into afternoon shade. These typically stay inside in the summertime too, just because I have such a collection of succulents and cactus that I put outside for the summer that the, I like to enjoy something in, this, in the uh, summertime indoors too and not just take everything outside. So these will stay inside for the summertime. So that's it for now. I just wanted to pass along my experience with Gabriella plants and really it was a good one. I would highly recommend them. They were uh, very quick on the shipping. I think it only took a week, although I had two separate orders, they combined everything. So I think overall, once everything got put together, it was only a week turnaround time. That's it for this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it does help my channel. I appreciate it and I hope everyone stays healthy.